Welcome back to URM Academy. If you are a rock and metal producer, this is your home on YouTube. Today's clip is from last month's Nail the Mix. We had Russ Russell on to mix At the Gates and The Haunted. And in this clip, he's tackling the bass and guitars from The Haunted song, specifically doing a little bit of EQ. Let us know in the comments after watching this what you think, because when I watched this clip, what I took away from it is that I'm probably being way too aggressive with my EQ. Like I'm jumping in there just making these big giant like deep cuts. And you know, that does get rid of a lot of the nasty stuff, but I have to wonder, am I losing some of the good stuff too? After watching Russ and just these light, surgical, delicate moves that he makes, I think that I might be getting a little bit too aggressive. So let us know in the comments if that's something you think you might be doing too. Well, let's have a look. <coughs> yeah, that's way too much. kind of evened it out a bit better. And you can see... really hear that yeah but you see like in the other riffs tickling a little bit let's just back it off a touch more it's um this auto function on here is usually fine as it is but you've got the manual threshold if you need to tweak it a bit I just turned it off. <laughs> Error number one. Are you counting? <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> Let's do that again. <laughs> Sorry. I blame the fly. Yeah. <laughs> this is why you killed him. Okay, and let's let's put a little multiband on there too. Actually, let's do I do it before? No, do it after. Ah, ba 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 ba. So you can also. A little tickle on the top there, just to, you, you don't want to lose any of the attack, but just to even it out a touch. Uh, and then... That's doing it. Like, I mean, it looks like you're in a different frequency range anyways with the Pro MB. It, it's around the same area. Where, where are we with this? 
I can't see from here it's exactly, right. but. Yeah, no, it's about the same, about in the same region, but just a bit broader. Got it. But it's only just tickling away. <laughs> One dB reduction, really. Could, could you bypass it and unbypass it? Tightens it up very slightly. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think if people should pay attention to that, it just exactly how subtle that was, because... We might add a bit more. We want to get the bass in. We'll see how they interact, and maybe we want to tame it a little bit more, but that's fine for now. But still, it's not neutered, I guess is my point. Like, it's, a, it's one of those things that you can't hear the effect. You notice when you bypass, like, it's like, oh, okay, I see how that helps. It's a lot tighter, but, um, but it's subtle, and you did not neuter the guitars. I just want to point that out because I know that that at first when people try this one uh they you know since it's a new thing they go too far so that they can hear it and it's like wow now we can really hear it, it must be working um or they don't understand why it doesn't work because some of their guitars are way too thin and uh you don't need that much and if you need a ton there's something wrong with your guitar tone probably well, the amount of time and effort that went into getting this tone and for him to play it so well uh, I don't need to do a great deal. Mm -hmm. And it, it would be pretty criminal, really, if I started carving it up and com yeah. completely changing it. Uh, I mean, you know, if it sounds great, don't fuck with it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we can have a little look at, see how that interacts with the bass. Pulled it down a little bit more, just a touch. So what, what did you got going on with the bass? Uh, we got the Sans Amp. I can't, you know, I've, I've used Sans Amp for a long time, and in some ways I'm kind of bored of it. The pedal or the plug-in? Both. I guess, you know, it's been a staple for yeah. ages. But I, I kind of I feel a bit bored of it now. Mm -hmm. uh, but in combination with the other one, it really works on this. What is the other one? Uh, the SVT with the um, rat. That's his sound. You know, that's what he plays live. He, mm -hmm. He's been working on that sound and playing that sound for years and Got years it. so and there's who am i to change his thing Fair enough. so is that a real svt mic'd up or the, uh, the the amplitude plugin i think it i think it was the uad oh, okay i'm not familiar with that one i think so the amplitude one is phenomenal have you ever used that one yeah it's a good one so you didn't use the DI in this? No. Uh, I don't think so, anyway. Got it. Are you doing any side chaining from guitar to bass? Uh, not from guitar, no, but I will from the kick to the bass. Uh, and probably a little bit from the snare to the guitar, as we did with At The Gate. Um, so what's interesting to me is that already, without even really processing the bass, you've got the guitar and the bass sounding pretty nice together. We spent quite a while kind of matching up the bass tone mm -hmm. just to make sure it had all the necessary bits and yeah. not too much of anything to sit with the guitars. Mm -hmm. um, you know, once again, 
I've done half the work at the point of, yeah, you know, before the mixing. So um, hopefully we don't have to do too much. It's great. I, mean, I think it sounds good right now, but you know, a few tweaks, it's going to be amazing. There's the DI. I, I, I can't remember if I used it or not. What are you trying to tame there? It goes a bit quacky on some of the high notes. So there's a duck on that one. Yeah. <laughs> we killed the goose, let's kill the duck too. And that's a lot of noise that that it could hear interfering with with uh, the guitars and the mix. Yeah. One thing uh, I've noticed that a lot of people do when uh, I, there's certain things that when I'm critting mixes come up over and over and over and again like symbols are too harsh. That's a very common thing. Another thing is when pe is people will try well they'll get the bass they'll add the distortion and all that stuff but there's this just there's this layer of noise in that range that just they don't treat right and so you hear it through it's like a blanket of noise throughout the entire mix yeah. and not in a good way yeah so and and you just notice kill. it you can't ignore it you can't it ignore becomes it. really annoying yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's it right there. You just got rid of that exact thing. Yeah. So. And it, it, it'll probably need a little bit more taming in that area as well. Um, but I'll wait till we've combined the two sounds together before attacking it more than that. It, uh, let's see if there's the same annoying thing in the sounds amp. much but it's still there
uh, sorry, I, I didn't say anything. I don't want to keep stopping you, but I just, I have questions. Um, sure. The, on the Q3, yeah. you did so, you did tame some of the low mids. What were you here? The last thing you did, what that were you? same kind of little build up area where that guitar mm -hmm. was, that, that was in the same place. And even, right. even though we haven't got the guitars on right now, you could just tell that, yeah. that that's going to build up and bring that problem back f with the guitars. Mm -hmm. So just tweak a little bit of that out. And then we're going to just tame it a little bit with the, uh, with the multi-band. Get rid of a few of those little spikes on the top. Yeah, but we've lost those little humps and yeah. little annoying things. They're sitting quite nicely together now. We could do with a bit more low-low on it, though. Is one of the reasons that you use the compressor rather than the EQ on the super lows um, because of the ability to have attack and release? Yeah, although the I've got to say the default attack and release settings seem to work mm -hmm. on pretty much everything. Yeah. Uh, on on the multi, I guess it's because I'm not doing a, a huge amount of reduction. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'd have to tweak the attack and release a bit more if you're doing any more heavy lifting. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they just that's then another thing I love about that plugin. It just works when you turn it on. Mm -hmm. You know. Tweak your threshold and your and your frequency bands. Pfft, job done. Yeah, totally easy. But yeah, let's get a little bit more sub in the bass. That's mental. <laughs> <laughs> so you just controlled the low end, and now you're adding some back. Yeah, just a little bit of overall.
notched out a little bit more of that fizzy fizz area. Gotta be careful not to lose the bite though. Okay, there you go. That was Russ Russell EQing the guitars and bass from Preachers of Death by The Haunted. And if you want to get your hands on the multi-tracks for this song as well as the rest of the video from this live stream mix session, there's a link to that in the description. You will get instant access to that as well as the multi-tracks and live stream mix session from the At The Gates song. So you get two for one. That's pretty cool. All right, well, hopefully you picked up a few tricks that you can use in your next mix and I will see you next time.